students, today we shall study about your chapter arithmetic progression. We come across an infinite number of patterns in our day to day life. Most of us just cherish at the sight of these patterns, while only a few wonder what is mathematics behind the pattern. One such number pattern is described in this chapter arithmetic progression. John Carl Frederick Gauss introduced the concept of arithmetic progression. The Victoria story goes like this. During his schooling, the mathematics teacher asked all the students to calculate the sum of first 100 positive integers. He had assigned this work to the students so that he could keep them engaged with work. However, Gauss came up with the perfect answer to the question in a few minutes. When asked by the teacher to explain the procedure he followed to arrive at the answer, Gauss explained it. He had arranged the first 100 positive integers taken in ascending order as one row and in descending order as the other row. When corresponding element to each row was added, the sum was found to be 101. As the number of elements was 100, he calculated the total sum as 100 into 101 is equal to 10,100. However, since he had taken the set of 100 integers twice, he divided the sum obtained by 2 and arrived at the final answer of the sum of 100 integers as 10,100 upon 2 as 5050. This formed the basis of all the further advances in the concept of arithmetic progression. So, students, was the story interesting? Okay. Now, let us consider some of the examples. See here, these numbers, the list of numbers has 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on, 100, 70, 40, 10 and so on, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1 and so on. 3, 3, 3, 3. Each of the numbers in the list is called a term. Okay. In first one, you observe each term is one more than the term preceding it. In the second one, each term is 30 less than the term preceding it. In the third one, each term is obtained by adding 1 to the term preceding it. In fourth one, each term is obtained by adding or subtracting 0 to the term preceding it. In all the list above, the successive terms are obtained by adding a fixed number to the preceding terms. Such list of numbers is said to form an arithmetic progression. We call it as AP. An arithmetic progression is a list of numbers in which each term is obtained by adding a fixed number to the preceding term except the first term. The fixed number is known as the common difference of the AP. Remember that it can be positive, it can be negative or 0. Let us denote the first term of an AP by A1, second term by A2 and nth term by An and the common difference by D. Then the AP becomes A1, A2, A3, An. So, A2 minus A1 is equal to A3 minus A2 that is equal to An minus An minus 1 that is equal to D. A, A plus D, A plus 2D, A plus 3D and so on. They represent an arithmetic progression where A is the first term and D is the common difference. This is called the general form of an AP. Okay? Now, let us do your exercise 5.1, question number 1. In which of the following situations does the list of numbers involved make an arithmetic progression and why? The taxi fare after each kilometer when the fare is rupees 15 for the first kilometer and rupees 8 for each additional kilometer. Can you guess? Is it an AP? Yes. First kilometer it is 15 and then it is 15 plus 8. Next for next it should be 
8 plus 8 that is a, a plus d and a plus 2d. Look here, we have fare for one, first kilometer a1 is 15 rupees, fare for second kilometer will be 15 rupees plus 8 rupees that is 23 rupees, fare for 3 kilometers obviously will be 23 plus 8 that is 31 rupees, fare for 4 kilometers will become 31 plus 8 that is 39 rupees. So, a2 minus a1 just check 23 minus 15 will give you 8. In the same way, a3 minus a2 that is 31 minus 23 will give us 8 and a4 minus a3 is again 8, 39 minus 31. So, difference between the successive terms are same, hence it is an AP. Is it clear? Let us see the next one. The amount of air present in a cylinder when a vacuum pump removes one fourth of the air remaining in the cylinder at a time. Let the amount of air in the cylinder A1 be x. Amount of air left after first removal is x minus 1 upon 4x that is 3 upon 4x. Amount of air left after second removal that is A3, 3 upon 4x minus 1 upon 4th of 3 by 4x is 9 upon 14x. Amount of air left after third removal will be A4 that is 9 upon 16x minus 1 fourth of 9 upon 16x that gives us 27 upon 64 into x. Do you observe we are not getting the same term in successive terms that means it is not forming an AP. You can see here the difference between the successive terms are not same hence it is not an AP. Let us see the next one. The cost of digging a well after every meter of digging when it cost 150 rupees for the first meter and rises by 50 rupees for each subsequent meter. Cost of digging for 1 meter deep is A1 that is 150 rupees and cost of digging 2 meters deep that is A2 is 150 plus 50 that is 200 rupees. Then cost for digging 3 meters deep is A3 200 plus 50 that gives us 250 rupees. Then cost of digging 4 meters deep is 250 plus 50 that gives us 300 rupees. Just observe A2 minus A1 is 200 minus 150 that is 50. A3 minus A2 is 250 minus 200 that is again 50. And likewise A4 minus A3 is 300 minus 250 that is 50 rupees. The difference between the successive terms is same. Hence it is an AP, arithmetic progression. Let us see the next. We have the amount of money in the account every year when 10,000 rupees is deposited at compound interest at 8 percent per annum. Rate is 8 percent per annum. Principal is A1 that is 10,000 and amount after one year is going to become 10,000 multiplied by 1 plus 8 upon 100 whole raised to 1 that is 10,800. Amount after 2 years will be A3, 10,800 multiplied by 1 plus 8 upon 100 whole raised to 2. It becomes 12,597. See for the amount after 3 years A4, it is 12,597 multiplied by 1 plus 8 upon 100 whole raised to 3. You can see this amount, it is 15,869. What do you notice? Do you have common difference to be same here? Obviously, no. So, it is not an AP. Let us see here. We can see the difference 800, 1797 and 3272. The difference between the successive terms are not same. Therefore, it is not an AP. I hope you have understood this. Okay, let us do the next one. Write first four terms of the AP when the first term A and the common difference D are given as follows. A is 10 and D is also 10. Observe here, first term is 10, second term obviously will become A1 plus D, that is 10 plus D, it is 10 plus 10, 20. Third term is A3, A2 plus D, 20 plus 10, it is 30 and fourth term A4 will become A3 plus D that is 30 plus 10 it is 40. 
I hope it is clear. So, our terms are 10, 20, 30, 40. Let us do the next one. Here, A is given as minus 2 and D is 0. Very simple, isn't it? First term A1 is A, that is minus 2. Second term will also be minus 2 because common difference is 0. Likewise, third term and fourth term also minus 2. So, we have all the terms to be minus 2 because common difference is 0. Now, let us take the next one. A is 4 and D is minus 3. In this case, the first term is 4. Second term is A1 plus D, that is 4 minus 3, that is equal to 1. Third term is A2 plus D, 1 minus 3, that is equal to minus 2. Fourth term will be A4, written as A3 plus D, that is minus 2 minus 3 equal to minus 5. So, what are the four terms? 4, 1, minus 2, minus 5. Is it clear? Okay. Let us do the next one. A is equal to minus 1 and D is equal to 1 upon 2. Common difference is 1 upon 2. So, first term we denote by A that is minus 1. Second term is written as A2 as A1 plus D. So, minus 1 plus 1 upon 2 will be equal to minus 1 upon 2. Third term is A3 written as A2 plus D minus half plus half that is equal to 0. Fourth term obviously will be A4 written as A3 plus D or 0 plus 1 upon 2 that is 1 upon 2. So, these are the four terms we get, next four terms. For the next fifth part, we have A is equal to minus 1.25, D is equal to minus 0 0.25. First term we denote by A minus 1.25 and second term is A2, A1 plus D. How I can write it? minus 1.25 minus 0 0.25 that gives me minus 1.50. Now, third term is A3, A2 plus D. It can be written as minus 1.50 minus 0 0.25 that gives us minus 1.75. Fourth term is A4 can be calculated as A3 plus D that is equal to minus 1.75 minus 0 0.25 that gives me minus 2.00. I hope it is clear. Now, let us see the next question. For the following APs, write the first term and the common difference. We have 3, 1, minus 1, minus 3. Just observe, what is the first term? Good, it is 3. Common difference can be calculated by subtracting first term from second term. So, 1 minus 3 gives me minus 2. Is it clear? Now, second question, we have minus 5, minus 1, 3, 7 and so on. Obviously, first term is how much? Minus 5, very good. And common difference can be calculated by subtracting first term from second term. That is minus 1 minus of minus 5, that gives us 4. Is it clear? Okay. Let us do next one, 1 upon 3, 5 upon 3, 9 upon 3 and 13 upon 3. So, first term is very clear, it is 1 upon 3. Common difference can be calculated by A2 minus A1. What is A2? 5 upon 3 minus 1 upon 3, obviously 4 upon 3, alright. Next one, 0 0.6, 1.7, 2.8, 3.9, here first term is 0.6. And what about the common difference? It is 1.7 minus 0 0.6 that gives us 1.1. Is it clear? Okay. Let us do the next one. Which of the following are APs? If they form an AP, find the common difference D and write three more terms. Okay. So, 2, 4, 8 and 16. Alright. So, first term is what? 2. Common difference will be 4 minus 2 that is 2. Let us see A2 minus A1. For checking whether it is an AP or not, we have to check whether the common difference is same. Okay. So, A2 minus A1 is 4 minus 2 that is equal to 2. Let me check for the next terms. A3 minus A2, 8 minus 4 is 4. A4 minus A3, it is 16 minus 8 is how much? 8. Do you find this common difference to be equal? 
no. So, the difference between the successive terms is not the same and hence it is not an AP. I hope you understand this point. Okay. Let us do the next one. We have 2, 5 upon 2, 3 and 7 upon 2. In this case, what is A2 minus A1? 5 by 2 minus 2. That gives us, see look here, 5 by 2 minus 2 is 5 minus 4 upon 2 that is equal to 1 upon 2. Can you see here? Likewise, A3 minus A2 will be 3 minus 5 upon 2 that is again 1 upon 2. A4 minus A3 is 7 upon 2 minus 3 that is equal to 1 upon 2. What do you notice? The difference between the successive terms are same. Hence, it is an AP. Common difference is 1 upon 2 and next three terms of this AP will be as follows. Fifth term will be A5 which can be calculated as A4 plus D that is 7 upon 2 plus 1 upon 2 that gives us 8 upon 2 that is equal to 4. Sixth term can be written as A6 and calculated as A5 plus D that is equal to 4 plus 1 upon 2 that is equal to 9 upon 2. Clear? Now, seventh term I can write as A7 and calculate as A6 plus D that can be calculated as 9 upon 2 plus 1 upon 2 that is 10 upon 2 is equal to 5. I think it is clear. Now, let us go to the next minus 1.2, minus 3.2, minus 5.2, minus 7.2. Let us check whether it is an AP. Same pattern A2 minus A1. If I subtract, what do I find? Minus 3.2, minus of minus that gives me plus. So, it becomes minus 3.2 plus 1.2. Obviously, it is minus 2, right? Likewise, minus 5.2 minus of minus 3.2 will again give me minus 2 and A4 minus A3 minus 7.2 minus of minus 5.2 is going to give me minus 2 again. What do you notice? The difference between the successive terms are same. Hence, it is an AP. Common difference is minus 2 and next three terms of the AP will be as follows. Fifth term is A5 written as A4 plus D minus 7.2 minus 2 that is equal to minus 9.2 and sixth term A6 can be calculated as A5 plus D that is equal to minus 9.2 minus 2 that is equal to minus 11.2 and in the same way seventh term A7 can be calculated as A6 plus D that is equal to minus 11. 0.2 minus 2 that is equal to minus 13.2. I hope you have followed this. Okay, let us do the next one now. Here we have very interesting minus 10, minus 6, minus 2 and plus 2. So, what is A2 minus A1? Minus 6 minus of minus 10 that gives me minus 6 plus 10 that is equal to 4 sign of bigger number. 10 is positive, so 4 is also positive. Here we have minus 2 plus 6 that is again 4 and 2 minus of minus 2 is again 4. Alright, so what do you notice? We notice that difference between the successive terms are same, hence it is an AP. If it is an AP, we are asked to calculate the next 4 terms. How do we do it? Fifth term is A5 calculated as A4 plus D that is 2 plus 4 is equal to 6. Sixth term is A6 written as A5 plus D. What was A5? It was 6 plus common difference 4 that is equal to 10. Next, seventh term A7 is equal to A6 plus D that is 10 plus 4 is equal to 14. I hope it is clear children. Okay, let us do the next part now. Here we have a very interesting question. 3. 3 plus square root 2, 3 plus 2 square root 2, 3 plus 3 square root 2 and so on. Let us calculate a2 minus a1. It is 3 plus square root 2 minus 3. Minus 3 plus 3 gets cancelled. We are left with square root 2. Now, a3 minus a2 can be calculated as 3 plus 2 square root 2 minus 3 plus square root 2. Look here, when we open the brackets, we have 3 plus 
2 square root 2 minus 3 minus square root 2. 3 minus 3 gets cancelled. What is 2 square root 2 minus root 2? It is square root 2. Now, a 4 minus a 3, we can calculate 3 plus 3 root 2 minus 3 plus 2 root 2 as 3 plus 3 square root 2 minus 3 minus 2 square root 2. Look here, 3 and minus 3 will get cancelled. What is 3 square root 2 minus 2 square root 2? It is square root 2. So, what do you observe? We see that the difference between the successive terms are same. Hence, it is an AP. Common difference is square root 2. So, next three terms of this AP will be calculated as follows. Fifth term is A5, A4 plus D. 3 plus 3 root 2 plus root 2 will obviously become 3 plus 4 root 2. And sixth term is A6 that is equal to A5 plus D. What was A5? 3 plus 4 root 2 plus root 2 that gives us 3 plus 5 root 2. And seventh term is A7, A6 plus D. So, 3 plus 5 root 2 plus root 2 that gives us 3 plus 6 root 2. I hope you have understood. Come on, let us do the next one now. We have here very interesting question 0 0.2, 0 0.22, 0 0.222, 0 0.2222. Just observe what is a2 minus a1? It is 0 0.22 minus 0 0.2 that gives us 0 0.02. And what is a3 minus a2? It is 0 0.222 minus 0 0.22, that is 0 0.002. a4 minus a3, see here 0 0.2222 minus 0 0.222, that is equal to 0 0.0002. So, the difference between the successive terms are not same. So, therefore, it is not an AP. Clear? Now, next one 0, minus 4, minus 8, minus 12. What is a2 minus a1? Minus 4, minus 0, that is equal to minus 4. What is a3 minus a2? Minus 8, minus of minus 4, that gives me plus 4, minus 8, plus 4, that is equal to minus 4. a4 minus a3 is minus 12, minus of minus 8 is plus 8. So, minus 12 plus 8 will be minus 4. What do you observe? We observe that the difference between the successive terms are same. Hence, it is an AP. Common difference is minus 4. Therefore, next three terms of the AP can be written as fifth term A5 is equal to A4 plus D. That is minus 12 minus 4 is equal to minus 16. Sixth term A6 is equal to A5 plus D that is equal to minus 16 minus 4 that is equal to minus 20. And seventh term A7 is equal to A6 plus D that is equal to minus 20 minus 4 that is equal to minus 24. I hope it is clear. Come on, let us go to the next part now. Minus 1 upon 2, minus 1 upon 2, minus 1 upon 2 and minus 1 upon 2. Very simple. We have A2 minus A1 as 0. And a3 minus a2 is also 0 and a4 minus a3 is also 0. So, difference between the successive terms are same and hence it is an AP. And easy to guess about the next terms. Common difference is 0. Next three terms of the AP will be again the same. Minus 1 upon 2, minus 1 upon 2, minus 1 upon 2 as common difference here is 0. I hope it is clear. Come on, let us do the next one now. We have 1, 3, 9, 27. Interesting again, we have a2 minus a1 as 3 minus 1, that is 2. What is a3 minus a2? It is 9 minus 3, that is equal to 6. What is a4 minus a3? 27 minus 9, that is equal to 18. Is it an AP? No, not at all. The difference between the successive terms are not same. Therefore, it is not an AP. Is it clear? Okay. Let us do the next one now. We have here a, 2a, 3a, 4a and so on. So, a2 minus a1 is 2a minus a that is equal to a. a3 minus a2 is 3a minus 2a that is equal to a. 
a 4 minus a 3 is 4 a minus 3 a that is equal to a. So, difference between the successive, successive terms are same. Hence, it is an a p. Common difference is a and next three terms of this a p is as follows. Fifth term is a 5 a 4 plus d that is equal to 4 a plus a that is equal to 5 a and sixth term a 6 is equal to a 5 plus d that is equal to 5 a plus a that is equal to 6 a. We have a next part here a, a square, a cube and a to the power 4. Observe a 2 minus a 1 is what? a square minus a and what is a 3 minus a 2? a cube minus a square and a 4 minus a 3 is a to the power 4 minus a to the power 3. Though it looks like an AP, but it is not an AP. See the difference between the successive terms are not same. Do you notice? They are not same. Therefore, it is not an AP. Let us do the next part. It is square root 2, square root 8, square root 18 and square root 32. This has appeared in board exams many times. Observe very carefully. What is a 2 minus a 1? It is square root 8 minus square root 2. How I can write square root 8? I can write 2 root 2 minus root 2. That gives me root 2. Okay. What is a 3? It is square root 18 minus square root 8. What is square root 18? Can I write it as 3 root 2? Yes. 3 root 2 minus 2 root 2 is again root 2. What is a 4 minus a 3? It is square root 32 minus square root 18. How I can write square root 32? 4 root 2 because 16 into 2 is 32. So, 4 root 2 minus 3 root 2 is again root 2. See how interesting it is. Is it forming an AP? Yes. The difference between the successive terms are same. Hence, it is an AP. So, common difference is square root 2 and next three terms of the AP can be written as fifth term C. A5 is equal to A4 plus D square root 32 plus square root 2 can be written as 4 root 2 plus root 2 that is 5 root 2 or square root 50. Sixth term a 6 is equal to a 5 plus d that is equal to 5 root 2 plus root 2 that is 6 root 2 and I can write it as square root of 72. Seventh term a 7 is equal to a 6 plus d that is equal to 6 root 2 plus root 2 that is equal to 7 root 2 or square root of 98 because 49 into 2 will give me square root of 98. Is it clear? Okay. Let us do the next part now. We have square root 3, square root 6, square root 9 and square root 12. Check a 2 minus a 1 is square root 6 minus square root 3 and what about a 3 minus a 2? It is square root 9 minus square root 6 that is 3 minus square root 6. Just observe my differences a 4 minus a 3 is square root 12 minus square root 9 is 2 root 3 minus 3. So, the difference between the successive terms are not same therefore, it is not an a p. Is that clear? See the next part now. We have 1 square, 3 square, 5 square, 7 square. Again very interesting question a 2 minus a 1 what is 3 square? 9. 9 minus 1 is 8. All right, a 3 minus a 2, 5 square minus 3 square, it is 25 minus 9 that is equal to 16. Next one, a 4 minus a 3, it is 7 square minus 5 square that is equal to 49 minus 25 that is equal to 24. So, the difference between the successive terms is not same, therefore, it is not an AP. I hope it is clear. Okay. Let us go to the next part now. We have 1 square, 5 square, 7 square and 73. Just see a 2 minus a 1 is how much? 5 square minus 1. 25 minus 1 is 24 and a 3 minus a 2 is 7 square minus 5 square. What is 7 square? 49. 5 square is 25. When I subtract I get 24. All right. a 4 minus a 3 is 73 minus 7 square. So, 73 minus 49 again gives me 24. Is it an AP? Yes. The difference between the successive terms are same. Therefore, it is an AP. 
common difference is 24 and next three terms of the AP is as follows. Fifth term is A5, A4 plus D, 73 plus 24 is 97. Sixth term is A6, A5 plus D, 97 plus 24 is 121. And seventh term A7 is equal to A6 plus D that is equal to 121 plus 24 that is 145. I think it is time for us to take the homework now. We have take down the questions for practice. First question, find the next term of the AP, 5, 2, minus 1, minus 4. Second, which term of the AP, 21, 18, 15 is minus 81. Next question, which term of the AP, 20, 17, 14 is first negative term. Question number 4, the eighth term of an AP is 0. Prove that its 30th term is triple its 18th term. Okay. Now, let us see what we studied today. Let us summarize in the session. You have studied the following points. First one, an arithmetic progression AP is a list of numbers in which each term is obtained by adding a fixed number D to the preceding term except for the first term. The fixed number D is known as the common difference and the general form of the AP will be A, A plus D, A plus 2D, A plus 3D and so on. A given list of numbers A1, A2, A3 is an AP if the difference is A2 minus A1 is equal to A3 minus A2 that is equal to A4 minus A3 and so on. They give the same value. That is, if a k plus 1 minus a k is the same for different values of k. So, students, I hope you enjoyed the lesson today and you must have understood the concept. Thank you.